Hello my friends and welcome. One of the main Ukrainian generals Sersky today said that Ukraine got all of the conditions to encircle the Bakhmut city. Well, based on the image that you see of the Bakhmut city, the encirclement seems to be far away from reality. But let's analyze the military map. So definitely the Ukrainian army has the success on the south, on the north and the northwest part. What are the perspectives of encirclement of the Bakhmut? Actually, there are some perspectives. First of all, Ukrainian army successfully moves towards Opetne by taking this territory, but the fight for Klishivka still continues. Liberating Klishivka is just a matter of time, but the next move is to go to Opetne, probably also to the south to Andreevka and Odarivka. Here the conditions are not yet existing for Ukrainian army to encircle the Bakhmut city. We might speak about the conditions if Ukrainian army takes Opetne. And the way to Opetne is not the easy walk. Russia has the natural trench over here, the downground, the river. There are also many of the forest lines over here that Russia may use as their defense lines, and they will use it for sure. Plus, this area is on a high ground, higher than this one. Let's speak about the possible time for Ukrainian army to go to Opetne. Let's measure the distance. Ukraine took around 5.5 kilometers for the recent one and a half months. It was a problematic assault for Ukrainian army because those are two hills over here near to Klishivka. The higher ground is usually very hard to take. I expect this terrain to be a little better compared to this one, but here are some of the villages that Ukraine needs to liberate, as I said to you before. That will bring us to probably the same time, one and a half months. Also, Ukraine moves forward near to Kurdimivka, one more vector of Ukrainian assault, but again here we can see the high ground in this area, lots of the villages, not easy territory to liberate. Potentially, the northern part is more profitable for Ukrainian army, but it's the standstill for many days. And here Ukraine took 4 kilometers for one and a half months. Russia still controls the Berhivka and they also control the very important hill. It's the highest one in this area. There is also the small village Dubovo Vasilika, so Russia uses it as their hub to resist in those hills. Here Ukraine tried to assault from this part, taking this territory, it was more or less successful, but it seems like Russia has the good resistance over here, also they have the good resistance in this valley, because they need to secure just this small part, Ukraine tried to get into this valley, but unsuccessful, and our gas just cannot go uphill, it's the suicide mission, so it's the big question about this territory, I thought it could be liberated long time ago, but I was wrong, Russia still controls it. Moreover, Russia performed a counterattack, moving the front line a little bit closer to this lake. Ukraine may try to go to Yahide, and there was the movement from our forces towards this direction recently, but first of all we need to secure this area, because the elevation is much more important than the village actually, and we shouldn't left this important part behind. Ukraine also tries to assault from this direction, maybe the idea would be to go to Berhivka from this side, and also to advance from this side, cutting this area from supplies. But here Russia has the hub in Krasnohara, and I think that they may resist on the way. That's why Ukraine started one more attack from this direction, quite a long time ago, taking the ground, and the idea was to deflect the Russian forces from Sundar and Krasnogora to fight in this area. At the same time, there was the movement from this side. By the way, we have the confirmation that this area was liberated by Ukrainian army. Three days ago, the Russian units tried to perform the counterattack using some of the vehicles, tanks, but were totally demolished, and it helped Ukraine to get some of the positions. So again, without taking those hills over here, without taking Berhivka, Yahidne, and Krasnohara, without cutting the supply road, there is no condition for Ukrainian army to encircle the Bakhmut city. For now, Russia has the multiple supply roads to the Bakhmut city and from the Bakhmut city, including the south direction, including the north direction, and obviously those two roads that unite in the single one near to the city. I guess that encircling the Bakhmut city is way more complicated task than many of the people think. But again, General Sirsky said that it's not the first operation. So if Ukraine moves to Opetne, if we go to Krasnohara, we may partially encircle the Bakhmut city, but still Russia may use the road to move the forces out. 
Actually, then the Ukrainian army started the counterattack and then Wagner forces withdrawn their units from the Bakhmut city, I thought that it would be very fast operation. But Russia possess resistance. So the battle for Bakhmut isn't over, but I'm sure that Ukraine will liberate the city. But if we check the fortification map of the Russian army, you see that the main line is far behind the Bakhmut city, and I don't think that in the nearby future Ukraine will have the resources to penetrate the defense line over here and go to liberate the LPR or DPR. For now we have resources just for a single jump, and I think Ukraine will perform it on the south. More awesome news from the United States of America. They will add one more military package for Ukraine, including many of the rockets for Patriots and Nassam's air defense systems. The new package was $400 million. According to the Reuters resource, White House thinks that Russia may attack civilian ships in the Black Sea and try to blame Ukraine for it. Just to remind you, two days ago Russia announced that all of the ships that go to Ukrainian ports would be counted as the military targets. Today Ukraine responded with the same statement. All of the ships that go to the Russian ports would be counted as the military targets for Ukrainian army, because they may carry the military cargo on board. As for the biggest Russian ammunition depot in Crimea, we have the satellite image before and this is the satellite image after. Even this afternoon there were reports of the explosions over there. Russia lost one more military blogger, his name was Mikhail Luchin and he also was the operator and commander of the drone platoon. He also organized and purchased many of the drones to the Russian army. This article says that he became famous after Ukrainian hackers hacked his donation page and ordered not the drones but many dildos from AliExpress. Totally, they wasted $25,000 that he was able to collect. Or maybe it was just his own excuse for purchasing those dildos. Vladland Tatarsky, who also was assassinated by someone in St. Petersburg many of the months ago, also was the friend of Mr. Luchin. So being the pro-Russian military blogger is one of the most dangerous jobs in the world. They never save, nor in Russia, neither in Ukraine. But there is one more thing why Luchin became famous blogger today. This is his squad, FPV drones and many of the infantry. They've been hit by Ukrainian artillery today, but not with the standard shells. It is the first video that shows the operation of the cluster munition that was sent to Ukraine from the United States of America. So you may understand what happened to those guys. Luchin went to see the Vladland Tatarsky in hell. By the way, it's not the only video that shows the cluster munition operation. One more was filmed during the daytime, and I published that on my Telegram channel because I cannot upload that stuff on this platform. By the way, we have some awesome news. One more Russian convoy was ambushed near to Krasnohorivka. It's the Donetsk Oblast. You may see the T-72 tank on fire and many more vehicles were ambushed. Russia lost many of the infantry vehicles and tanks, so it's the failed attempt for the counterattack in that area. The area is over here. They tried to get to Krasnohorivka through the fields, but failed somewhere in this place. Poland may transfer more MiG jets to Ukraine. We are speaking about 20 of the airplanes. They already transferred 10 of the units and they're waiting for the Western jets to go to the Polish Air Force and after that they're free to go supplying those fantastic machines to Ukrainian army. But obviously for us F-16s are much better. We have the article from the Washington Post saying that Ukraine begins to fire United States provided cluster munitions. Yes, we saw them already on the front lines even with video evidence. The last night Russia attacked Mykolaiv and Odessa. They continue to target the infrastructure that is used to handle the grains. And unfortunately one of the rockets hit the residential building. There are some burns that people received over there. As it was reported for this hour, all of the civilians are alive. More news are coming from the Kerch Bridge. Russia started to close the only line available for the transportation. Yes, every time they sniff the threat from the drones, 
they stop the movement of the vehicles across the bridge. Just for today, they halted the traffic for more than four times. It's just crazy for any kind of the supplies. And just to remind you, trucks are still unable to move across the road. This is how the Russian military industry is making their tanks in their factories. From what I see, this is the T-90 Russian mighty tank. Those workers are doing something with the barrel and the main instrument that they use is the harmer. Yes, everything is done manually with this very ancient screwdriver. There are no any automatic tools as you see. They put the special cover around the barrel, but I can see that they are using very ancient tools for that. What is this? Ural Vagon Zavod. That's the place where those tanks are being made. And let's go for the main cringe. Yes, the Russian Satan Church puts the saint water on those tanks. That is how they go to the front lines. And that is what usually happens to them after. As it was reported today by the eyewitnesses and also the Russian media, Ukraine launched the drone attacks on the Russian airfields, first of all near to Gvardiyske, that is one of the main airfields that Russia uses, and also near to Saki, Nova Fedorovka, the airfield that was already attacked the last year. Russia lost many of the airplanes over there. However, today no damages were reported, just the loud bangs. According to the Washington Post article, United States already transferred 190 Bradleys to Ukrainian army, from which Ukraine totally lost 10. Some of the other Bradleys require maintenance, and that is one of the main goals of our allies, to provide the maintenance for the Western-made equipment which is now fighting on the front lines. My friends, I'm gonna keep you updated on situation in Ukraine. Don't forget to press the like to this video and also if you want to support my job, you might find some of the links in the video description just below. You may support me on Patreon, on the sponsorship of this channel or on the PayPal. Thank you so much for your awesome support. I wish you all a peaceful sky wherever you are and have a great time.